Hey everybody. So in video 1929, we went into considerable detail about how to make one of these. It's a serpentine coil. The reason we went into that detail is what we're looking to do is make a more efficient and more powerful generator for our wind turbine. Now, when a wire generates, it generates the most efficiently when it's in a straight line like that. As we turn it around like that, we lose efficiency of generation. So we want as much wire as possible to go through the magnetic field in that direction. Now, when we think of an ordinary coil, an ordinary coil goes round and round and round, and so it has a top and a bottom. A serpentine coil only has a top or a bottom. So we've reduced the weight of copper for the same generation. So as the generation stays the same and the weight of copper goes down, then the energy density goes up. So by removing either a top or a bottom, we've improved the energy density of the generator that we're going to make. Or if you like, we've made it more powerful because it's more energy dense. If we can keep these wires in this direction, then we've made it more efficient because the wires are at their most efficient orientation. And that's what matters about the serpentine coil. Now, in order to get that to do that, of course, we want the greatest amount of wire in a straight line going through our magnetic field. So the longer the magnetic field, the more of this wire will be straight and the more efficient it's going to be. Now, we have made serpentine coils before when we did them in little one centimeter circles to test the idea. And what we got was a zigzag pattern like that, where most of it was in that kind of angle. It's not very efficient. With this one, where we've got the most of the wire going down, then we've super improved the efficiency. And of course, we can do that really easily by using bigger magnets. So what I've got here are a bunch of 65 millimeter by one centimeter by three millimeter N35 magnets. And I've drawn this up on Tinkercad. What this is, is three bits, and that's all we actually need. We need a rotor, we need a stator, and we need a bit uh, act as a cover that can join it up to the rest of our wind turbine, which is exactly what we got here. We've got a stator, where I put some wire on already from video 1929. That's our rotor, which is where our magnets are going to go, and that's our cover, and all three just slot together like that to make our generator. So our generator is actually pretty simple to make. The magnets go in a north-south, north-south orientation. And here they are, here's our N35s. So we do them north, south, north, south, north, south. We put our serpentine coils onto our stator, and one's already been put on, courtesy of video 1929. There are 200 turns on here, and I've got two more to add. Now, I could make this three phase by putting the coils at 120 degree separation, but I'm actually just going to line them up with the slots that I've got ready for them. So, let's put those on. There is my rotor. Now these magnets are north-south, north-south, and there's 12 of them, and both of that's important because there are 12 of these wires here. We've course, got six on the crown and six on the bottom where it makes the turn, and that matters because as that goes past there, it'll generate going past the north, and that will force the electricity to go in that direction. Now, if it was north and this one was passing a north as well, then it would both go in the same way and we get nothing out. Because we're making this one pass south, as this one passes north, then that goes that way and then that way, and we can get what we want out of it. So we have the same number of straight bits of wire as we have of magnets. The magnets are in north-south, and then these crowns and dips. It doesn't really matter as long as you've got six crowns, six dips to make that crown. And those are the keys to a serpentine coil. Now, the coil itself, if you haven't watched 1929, is super, super easy to make. And that's one of the other joys of it. It's how easy they're to make. Because to wind 12 coils as individual coils and then lose half of that copper, it's a little bit depressing, it takes forever. To wind one serpentine coil takes no time at all, and you don't need half of the copper. So, we've put it on to there, and we've got our rotor, and obviously our rotor goes in there with a spacer of an 8mm washer to make sure that it spins freely. Now, this is a work in progress. So I'm not going to make the Tinkercad files public at the moment, but once I get all the lengths right, then the Tinkercad files will be released so that everybody can use them. Now all we have to do is pop our cover on, give it a spin, and it'll generate. Now we have three coils, so we have six wires. Each of those will generate the same because they're identical coils, and we can connect them 
up in series if we want to increase the voltage or parallel if we want to increase the amps. But let's put that together and give it a spin. So I've got a single coil wired up. Remember there are three coils in here. I've connected to the voltmeter. We'll spin it by hand and see what we get as a voltage. Oh, there we go. Nine volts, no problem at all. So if we were to connect all those three up in series, we'd get uh, 27 volts out of it, which is pretty impressive for that. So that is genuinely more efficient. It's more powerful and it's a lot cheaper than the kind of generators people have been buying or making, which is the win about such a thing. So I thought I would share it with you. As I said, I've got a couple of things I still want to do. You'll notice that's not quite long enough, so I need to make that a little bit longer. And then I'll release the files so that people can copy this if they want to. Now, a little bit more of a technical discussion about it for folks to answer some questions people have been asking. One of them is, that, well, what wire am I using? Now I use 0.2 millimeter wire in this, and I use that because um, the only voltage that's generated is BLV sine theta. So B is the strength of magnetic field, L is the length of wire, V is the speed at which it turns, and sine theta is the angle that it makes with the magnetic field, which is why we've been so, well, so, concentrating on making sure that it's a straight line because sine theta of the straight line is one it's the biggest it can be as the angle changes then it drops below one and of course that reduces the amount it can generate quite dramatically the reason I use this wire is that it's a purely physical thing. A wire has thickness. If I use a thicker wire, I can't get as much wire in here, and the length of the wire matters when it comes to generation. But of course, as the wire gets thinner, then the resistance goes up, so its ability to handle amps goes down as the wire gets thinner. I want a high voltage because, well, if I'm going to put this through a rectifier and use cheap components, I don't have to worry about a voltage drop if I've got lots of volts that can drop. People also say things like, um, well, you really ought to be taking amp measurements at the same time. You've got to remember that the um, generator takes the energy from the wind and turns it into electrical energy. It can't do more than the wind. So if there's about 5 or 10 watts in the wind, you're not going to get more on that out of this because there isn't more going in. Now we know what the voltage is. means if we want to beat the pants off a commercial generator, we're looking at generating around about 200 milliamps or so to get 5 to 10 watts. That wire is going to cope with that. And when we get the speed in that, we're going to get that. What happens when a turbine bursts into flames is that the wire choice was wrong. It's going too quickly, there are too many amps being pushed through too thin a wire at too high a voltage and it bursts into flames. Here we're unlikely to push more than an amp or so, which is what that wire will cope with. 200 milliamps, no problem at all. We are going to get about 25, 28 volts out of it, around about 200, 300 milliamps, and that will give us the 5 or 6 watts that we actually want. Now, I've said that this um, is more efficient, it is more powerful, and it is cheaper. Those are bold claims, and people often say, if you're going to make bold claims, you have to have bold evidence. But one of the things they're forgetting is, I didn't invent this. I'm actually just replicating it to show how easy it can be to make. And those bold claims, well, they're just hugely backed up by the research. So if you want more information on this, then have a look on Google Scholar, read a few research papers, and you'll find that what I'm saying is backed up by the research. So that's the position to go to when you want to know more about it, is have a read in Google Scholar. Well, all I'm doing is demonstrating how easy it is to make such a thing, that it can perform really, really well, and you don't have to spend a fortune on it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're enjoying the series. That is obviously going to be our general Generator, so I'll get that printed a little bit more, make sure it can connect up to the rotor that we're going to put on it, and then we'll see what that does in an actual wind. Again, these can be connected in series or parallel, depending on which one you want, volts or amps. I'm quite happy with uh, 9 volts by turning it by hand, so I may just put those in parallel, and we'll get more amps out of it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.